Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. This is the second part to our 3D Studio Max lace cloth tutorial. In the first part, we created our cloth object. We folded it and creased it. So let's carry on from here. Press Alt W on the keyboard to go to all four viewports. Now we can go to our perspective view. This is the position of the image that I want when I render out. So now I'm going to go up to Views on the main toolbar and select Create Camera from Viewport. A camera has automatically been placed in my scene. Let's go back over to the camera view, click on the word camera, and now from the menu scroll down and click on show save frames. Now I can see the exact position for my output size. We'll carry on and create a simple light setup. Let's go over to the create panel lights, and then behind photometric, we'll go to standard. And now we're going to select first a mental ray area spotlight. We're going to drag out our spotlight in the top viewport. Right click to come out of the light creator mode. Right click again and select the move tool from the fly out menu. Now let's go over to the front viewport, we'll zoom out. And from here we can drag the light up. Now we can go over to the modify panel. We're going to scroll down under general parameters. Make sure we have our shadows turned on and ray traced shadows. We'll scroll down a bit more. Let's have a look at the intensity. The multiply is set to 1. In spotlight parameters, here in the fall off, let's bring it up to 80. Then we'll scroll up and turn on overshoot. Now we'll ca carry on scrolling down. In advanced effects, make sure we have diffuse and specular turned on. Now we can go to the area light parameters. Here in type, let's select disk. The radius and the samples, they're going to soften our shadows. So at the moment, we're just going to do a trial test. Let's type in radius of 20 and samples. We'll put in U10 and a V10. But we might come back a little bit later on and change this. Now we're going to add a couple of more lights. We'll go back to the Create Panel, Lights. And this time we're going to select a mental ray area omni. We'll go back to our top viewport and we'll drop our omni there. Right click to come out of the, cam uh, the light creator mode. And now here in the left viewport, let's drag up our omni light. We'll come over to the modify panel. We're going to turn off shadows. And in intensity, we're going to bring the multiplier down. Bring it down to 0.3. Now we'll go to Advanced Effects and we're going to turn off Specular. We're going to create one more light. To do that we'll just hold the Shift key down and drag out a copy of the Omni that we've just created. In the Clone option, select Copy, then press OK. Here in the top viewport we're just going to position it the same as we see in this video. We can also lower the light from the left viewport. When you're finished moving your Omni light we'll go over to the Modify panel and we'll change the intensity. Let's go to the multiplier and we're going to type in 0 0.5. Then let's just come up to the general parameters and we're going to click on exclude. We're going to exclude the plane from the Sobni light. We'll just click on ground, which is our plane. We'll click on the small arrow that's in the center and then press the OK button. I'm going to do a quick render, but first I'm going to click in the camera viewport to activate it and then I'll go to the main toolbar and click on the rendering icon. I'm going to pause this video while it's rendering. It's finished rendering now, so let's have a look. Very nice. We can see we have some nice soft shadowing around here. We can really see the folds and creases. I'm going to go back into my spotlight parameters and I'm going to bring the samples down. So I'll click on my spotlight. I'll come over to area light parameters. And in the radius, I'm going to type in 15. And in the samples, U and V, I'll type in 8. OK, now we can add some materials. So let's go up to the material editor or just press M on the keyboard. We're going to use a mental ray arch and design material. So I'll just drag one out. Double click on the material to open it and then we're going to change the name. We'll just type in ground. Let's go over now to templates 
Now we're going to select a matte finish template. Next we'll click on the diffuse color slot and from the color selector we're going to select a darker grey. Then press OK. There we are, that's our ground material. Now we can just drag it over to the plane. Let's scroll up and now we can drag out another arch and design material. Double click to open it and we're going to change the name. This time we're going to type in shape. We'll go back over to templates and we're going to select a glossy finish template. We'll click on the diffuse color slot and we're going to select a red. When you're happy with the shade of red, just press on the OK. OK, now we can drag the material over to the shape. Let's create our last material. We'll drag out another arch and design material. Double click to open it. And now we'll change the name. We'll type in lace cloth. Let's go over to templates. And we're going to select another matte finish template. Click on the small icon beside the diffuse color slot and double click on bitmap. I have the two maps in my scenes assets folder but you can get these maps from your program files. Just go to 3D Studio Max, Maps, Arch Mat, which means Arch Material and then click on Furnishing Fabrics Lace. There we are, now we've attached our first map. Let's come over here and just have a look at our bitmap or we'll double click to open it. If we double click inside the picture, we can see an enlarged version. Now let's click on the outside so it's opened. Here in the coordinates, we're going to set the tiling to 3 for the U and then 3 for the V. We'll go back to our arch material, double click to open it again, and now we're going to scroll right down nearly to the bottom to cut out map. We'll click on the node. And we're going to drag it out. Just drag it out. When we let go of the mouse, the menu will appear. So we'll go to standard and then bitmap again. Navigate back to 3D Studio Max Maps. And in the arch material, you'll find the Furnishing Fabrics Lace Mask. We have just applied a mask map to our cutout slot. Let's double click to see the material. OK, now we're going to double click on the outside to open it and we're going to set our tiling. In the U, we'll type in 3 and in the V, we'll also type in 3. There we are. OK, I'm just going to go to the top menu and press on the Layout All icon. There we are, we have a better view. I'm just going to zoom in. Double click on the arch and design material to open it and now we can drag the material over to our cloth. Just one more thing to do so we can see it is to go to the menu and we'll click on show shaded material in viewport. Now we can close our material editor. Well I think that's it now. Let's go to our camera view. We'll click anywhere in the viewport to activate it. Then up to the main toolbar, click on the rendering icon. There we are, we're starting to render. I'm going to pause this video while it's rendering. And here's our result. Look at that, we have some nice folds and creases. We can see the shadows. See through lace, that is nice. I hope you'll be able to use this technique for future projects. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.